Member statements. I recognize the member for Algoma, Manitoba. Thank you, Speaker. And I heard that cry at the beginning of uh, the session today, and I want to welcome back our friend Bruno. Welcome back, Bruno. <laughs> Speaker, on October 5th, I wrote to the Minister of Education about the closure of child care centres in Duberville and Saginaw due to staff shortages. These closures left parents to come up with new arrangements for their children's care on a moment's notice. A constituent in Duberville informed me that one parent travels an hour every day with her child from Duberville to Wawa for childcare and then has to take the same trek back home every single day. With the winter months coming, you can imagine how stressful and dangerous this will be. In a Saginac, the wait list has grown from 26 individuals. Staff there say operating on skeleton crew is a regular thing and have had to transfer workers from another location just to keep their doors open. Speaker, this is unacceptable in Ontario. Young families are under enough stress with the skyrocketing cost of living as it is. This staffing crisis is the result of this government's low-wage policies and lack of funding to child care centres to hire and retain qualified individuals. The government must end this crisis and give early childhood education workers fair pay so that children can thrive and parents can have peace of mind. This cannot wait. The government needs to step up to the plate and recognize that child care workers and Ontario families deserve better. Member Statements, the member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Speaker. As always, it's an honour to rise in the House today. Mr. Speaker, I felt it's very important today to take this opportunity to acknowledge the commitment to the community demonstrated by all those candidates who put their name forward for municipal council and school board elections throughout uh, Sarnia Lambton and, of course, the province of Ontario. I don't have to tell anyone in this house that putting your name on the ballot is not an easy decision to make. By putting forward your platform and ideas, you open yourself up to scrutiny and criticism from the public and our friends in the press. However, the debate of those ideas is fundamental to our democracy. And without a variety of candidates and a diversity of opinion, whether they finished on top of the polls or somewhere farther down the list, I want to congratulate every candidate in Sarnia Lampton on their campaign and let them know just how much their participation mattered to their community. I look forward to working with all the returning and newly elected mayors and members of council in Sarnia Lampton. I want to say congratulations to newly elected mayors Gary Ackerson in Plimpton, Wyoming, and Jeff Agar at St. Clair Township. I also applaud Mayors Kevin Marriott in Indiskillen Township, Ian Veen in Oil Spring, Brad Loosley in Petroya, Bev Hand in Point Edward on their re-election. And of course, uh, Mr. Speaker, special congratulations to Mayor Mike Bradley in Sarnia, who was just elected to his 11th term oh, wow. as Mayor of the Imperial City. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa West, Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. Family physicians are an essential part of our health care system, but far too many Ontarians currently do not have a family doctor. According to a recent study, 1.8 million Ontarians do not have access to a regular family physician. This includes many residents of Ottawa West, Nepean. I have heard from many constituents who are desperately searching for access to a primary care physician, but to no avail. One local doctor wrote to me that her office has no less than 10 people walking in every day, hoping to find a family doctor taking on new patients. Family physicians, meanwhile, are experiencing burnout, and too many of them are currently closing their practices. They are contacting my office to help her, to ask for help in finding additional resources that will allow them to keep serving patients. These family doctor shortages have serious implications. Erin Bain, one of my constituents, was recently informed that her doctor is closing her practice. Her doctor is under 40, but she has experienced so much stress over the past few years that she is walking away from the profession of medicine. Erin and her parents, who are in their 70s and live with chronic health concerns, are now frantically searching for a new doctor, hoping they won't be forced to go to the emergency room for routine care. Wait times at Ottawa hospitals are already over 12 hours. We can't afford patients who need non-emergency care ending up in the ER because of a doctor shortage. We need this government to take the crisis in health care seriously, invest in all parts of our public health care system, and make sure everyone gets the health care they deserve. 
The next member's statement, the member for Thunder Bay, Atacoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As yesterday was the municipal elections in Ontario, I want to start off today by thanking everyone that put their names forward in the municipal and school board elections across Ontario. Participating in our demogra democratic process by putting your names on a ballot to represent your communities is something that you should all be proud of. To those that were elected yesterday, I offer you my sincere congratulations. Each of you have been entrusted with a responsibility to serve your communities. Having served on council in my community for 31 years, I can tell you that the experience can be a very rewarding one. To those that have been elected for the first time, you will soon find out that your responsibilities will demand a considerable amount of your time and it will impact not only on you but your family as well. Please recognize the sacrifices that your family will be making while they support you. In my role as PA to the Minister of Munic Municipal Affairs, I look forward to working with all of you towards our mutual goal of continuing to make Ontario and our communities the best they can be. As with all elections, we will see change at council tables across the province. I want to thank all members that are not returning for their service and commitment to their communities. In my riding of Thunder Bay, Atacokan, there are several members of council that are not returning, but I'd like to mention one in particular, and that is Atacokan Mayor Dennis Brown. Mayor Brown decided to retire after an incredible 38 years of service. Throughout his time on council, Mayor Brown has worked tirelessly to make Atacokan a better place to live, work and play, and the word impossible was not in his vocabulary. It has been a pleasure for me to work with Mayor Brown over the years, and I want to offer him my gratitude and sincerest best wishes in his retirement. Thank you. Next, the member for Kiwetno. Miigwech, uh, Speaker uh, Minikishibaya. Uh, speaker, uh, fall is hunting season across Ontario. And um, in Kiwetnook, in uh, far northern Ontario, it's something that, uh, that we all do in practice. We have to understand that hunting is a way of life for all of us in the north. You know, it brings families together, it brings communities together, and it's important to, uh, uh, to acknowledge that. And I know, uh, and uh, I see all the pictures, all the you know, the stories from uh, the, all the hunters up north, whether it's moose, whether it's, uh, you know, the fishing that happens in the north. I know for, uh, for me, uh, hunting is a, is a way of life, as I said. Hunting is part of who I am as a First Nations person. And uh, I, I will continue these ways of life uh, for, to pass down to the children, the grandchildren that are uh, forthcoming. And I know sometimes people ask me, what is land back? Land back to us in the north is uh, going back to the land. Land back is uh, building a, a cabin in, uh, in these forests, in, in these lands. Land back is uh, relearning your language. It's a gift that we have from our ancestors. And the one I'm proud of, and that, uh, that we will pass on for generations to come. Miigwech. Member statements. The member for Brantford Grant. Thank you, Speaker. On Sunday, October 16th, I had the honour of attending the Six Nations Veterans Association annual Remembrance Day parade and service in Oshweekin. The beautiful sunny fall day did not mask the seriousness of the occasion, honouring First Nations veterans that fought in every major conflict that Canada has ever been in. Speaker, the Six Nations Remembrance Day ceremony is very personal to me. The liber liberation of the Netherlands from September 1944 to April 1945 played a key role in the culmination of the Second World War as the Allied forces closed in on Germany from all sides. The 1st Canadian Army played a major role in the liberation of the Dutch people who had suffered terrible hunger and hardship under the increasingly desperate German occupiers. Six Nation soldiers were among Allied soldiers that fought town to town canal by canal, pushing back the occupying German forces from the country of my birth, the Netherlands. The 1st Canadian Army also played a leading role in opening Belgium and the Netherlands' Kelt estuary gateway to the port of Antwerp, a key city in the region. More than 7,600 Canadians died in the eight-month campaign to liberate the Netherlands 
a tremendous sacrifice in the cause for freedom. And Speaker, I will wear a poppy with a deep sense of pride, lovingly made in my riding of Brantford Brant by Tuscarora hands that remind me of the sacrifices made by First Nations, Canadian, and Allied troops in Europe. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker, and, and thank you, Speaker, for the opportunity to visit Yellowknife as part of the Canadian Parliamentary Association. You know, their parliament in Northwest Territories is driven by consensus. And I think that all members of this House will agree that public education is one of our most important um, responsibilities as a legislature. And that our public education system was the hardest hit in the last two years of the COVID-19 pandemic. The harsh reality, Speaker, is that our students have missed more school days than any other jurisdiction in North America. As a result, our public education faces an urgent race to catch up. But again, this challenge represents a steeper climb for some more than others. Added to this, we have entered the flu season, and we're continuing to manage the latest COVID variants. This means that more disruption is likely. More supports are needed in our public education system, not less. And yet, alarmingly, the government continues to underspend when it comes to public education. And, Speaker, while families during this time need support to manage the inflation crisis, direct payments to parents while taking away those precious resources from the classroom are not addressing the gaps in learning that students currently face. I see that in my own riding in Scarborough Guildwood, where many students are struggling to reach grade level in reading. All students do not require the same level of supports to catch up, and it, that is why it is critical that solutions are put forward by the government that are equitably designed to meet the needs of all Ontario's learners. The best place for this investment is in our public education system. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to rise today to celebrate the first annual Hungarian Heritage Month in Ontario. This past Friday, I was proud to join the Minister of Citizenship and Multiculturalism and the Me Mental Health and Addiction and the MPP from Flamberg Glenbrook here at Queen's Park to help raise the Hungarian flag. Together with officials from the Hungarian consulate and the Hungarian Canadian community leaders. On Sunday, we celebrated Hungarians' Republic Day, which marks two important events. 66 years ago, the Hungarian people revolted against the Soviet tyranny and oppression. And exactly 33 years later and 33 years ago, Hungary became a democratic parliamentary republic. Again, Speaker, on behalf of the Hungarian Canadians in Mississauga and across Ontario, I just want to thank members from both sides of this House for supporting my private member's bill earlier this year and to create the first Hungarian Heritage Month in Canada and to recognize a community that has contributed so much to Ontario. Speaker, later this week, the President of Hungary, Katerina Novak will visit Ontario. She is the first woman elected president of Hungary and also the youngest president in the history of Hungary. I look forward to celebrating Hungarian Heritage Month together with her, and I know that all members will join me to welcoming her to Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Statements, the member for Don Valley North. Thank you. But the fall and winter season upon us, a potential resurgence of COVID-19 and the flu season is fast approaching. In addition to the province's strong vaccine program to help, Ontario, to, to help protect Ontarians, it is important to remind the public that practicing hand washing and good home hygiene help to provide an additional layer of defense against the risk of contracting COVID-19 and the seasonal flu. Speaker, I want to thank American Hygienic Corporation for their generous donation of sanitizing wipes to help further protect our vulnerable citizens and seniors in the community of Down Valley North. I sincerely thank them for their care and kindness. Speaker, these wet wipes are 
being distributed by a team of dedicated volunteers who work diligently to support seniors and marginal, marginal people in our community who don't always have the resources to access web webs. Speaker, I'm proud to recognize the compassionate member of my community who so often put their needs of others ahead of their own. I am thankful for the constituents of Dunwoody North who consistently demonstrated that their priorities are in the right order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Much. Member statements, the member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Speaker. I rise with a heavy heart to honour and give my deepest condolences to the families of Constable Morgan Russell, or Mo, as he was known by his close friends, and Constable Devin Northrup. They paid the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty and embodied the South Simcoe values of teamwork, integrity, respect, compassion, integrity, and, and, um, and so much more, Speaker. These professionals in their field uh, were professionals in their field and served in the emergency response unit and touched the lives of countless individuals. I had the honour to know Constable Northrup and, ha and had an opportunity to do a ride along with him where I learned about all his work in the mental health field. Both Constable Northrup and Russell were passionate and devoted to serving those facing mental health challenges and finding ways to better support youth in our region. Constable Russell could have retired years ago, but insisted on serving his community for many more years. As Staff Sergeant Chalmers remind us, the greatest contribution that we can give to these heroes in life and their families is to take responsibility for the youth in our community and to connect with the children, young adults in our lives not just via text message, but a call to check in and let them know that they are loved and supported. A simple call, hug, or kind words can change a day in the life of someone who is experiencing difficult times and sadness. Do not let it go unnoticed and do not be afraid to ask for help. If we don't change the ways that we do things, more people will get hurt. As Madeline, the daughter of Constable Russell, reminded us that our police officers are first responders, our men and, uni our men and women in uniform who serve, are not just those to serve in our community, but they are beloved by their beloved spouses, parents, family members, and friends. To the Northrop family, to the Russell family, I want to let you know that Constable Northrop and Russell will not be forgotten. They will remain as heroes in our hearts and throughout our community for years to come. Our government, our community, and the South Simcoe Police have your back, and I want to ask everyone to join me here in this legislature to pay gratitude to Constable Russell and Constable Northrop. Thank you.